Look, I know more about this desert than you do. Does the money you might get from our client mean more to you than your life? Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin. Mm, yes, hey, boy. Uh, you, uh, uh, you enjoy sitting here? Uh, relax, uh, smoke a cigar, read newspaper? Oh, I certainly do, hey, boy. That's why I gave you specific orders that I was not to be disturbed today. I need a little rest and relaxation. Oh, my. What's the matter with you? Oh, don't know. You seem quite troubled, hey, boy. What is it? Oh, don't know. Business condition, maybe. Oh, I see, yes. Well, it's uh, up and down, hey, boy. Oh, ye, sir. Ye down today, all right. I take it the guests in the hotel haven't been exactly lavish with their tips, huh? Miss Paladin, darn right stingy. Oh, well, it'll pick up. Hey, sir, hey, boy, have good reason to feel encouraged, but uh, he don't know. All right, hey, boy, what is it? Miss Paladin, uh, see that man stand over there by desk? Uh-huh. That man, uh, his name, Miss Higby. He said, hey, boy... Do you know where I can find Mr. Paladin? And? Uh, hey, boy, I remember Mr. Paladin say, do not wish to be disturbed. So, uh, hey, boy, say, oh, no, sir. You were quite right, hey, boy. Yes, sir. Oh, then a man reach in pocket, pull out biggie tip and say, be worth a good deal to me if I could talk to Mr. Paladin. Then what did you do? Oh, I just uh, walk away. Come over here, ask you if you enjoy wasted time, smoke cigar, read a newspaper. I see. All right, hey, boy, bring him over. Why, oh, yes, sir. Like you say, our business is all up and down. That's a warning signal for all drivers. And that can be a warning signal for drowsy drivers on long, monotonous trips. You see, driving can make you drowsy no matter how much sleep you get. And driving and dozing just don't mix. Why take chances? Take no-dose, stay-awake tablets. Millions of times a year, safe no-dose keeps drivers awake and alert. Helps you bounce back so that you feel sharp, ready for any emergency. How does no-dose do it? Ask your doctor. He'll tell you that no-dose contains a safe and accurate amount of caffeine, the same refreshing stimulant you get in your coffee or tea. But safe no-dose acts faster, is handier and more reliable. Best of all, it is not habit-forming. And no-dose is so safe, it is legally sold on a national basis without a prescription. Get no-dose, stay-awake tablets, to help you stay awake and alert. It could save your life. <laughs> And now, Mr. Higby, what can I do for you? Do you know the name Solomon Fisk Bibber? Of course. And when you hear that name, what do you think? You really want to know? Well, naturally, the first thing that comes to anyone's mind in connection with that name is wealth. Fabulous wealth. Well, the way I put it, Mr. Higby, is filthy rich, and I mean filthy. Sir? Well, I can never seem to forget that he got the start on that fortune of his by profiteering during the war. Oh, come now, that's neither here nor there. Well, it is to me, but... Anyway, what about Solomon Fisk Bibber? Well, I've been on a rather interesting assignment for that gentleman. I've just arrived here from the Orient on the steamer Prospero. Oh, the Prospero docked this morning, didn't she? Yes. Yeah. Carrying in her holds the treasure, it took me the better part of a year to search out on an unlimited expense account, you understand. Yes, of course. Pavo Cristati. Pavo Cristati? Peafowls, to be exact. A pear, a peacock, and a peahen. Oh, and what beauties. 
an extremely rare species from Salon. Oh, you're an ornithologist, eh, Mr. Higby? Not exactly. Let's say I'm an opportunist. Uh, the peafowls will cost my client, Mr. Bibber, a pretty penny, but uh, he wants what he wants. Well, what does he want with a couple of peafowls? Oh, just another costly item to enhance the magnificence of his estate on the Hudson. The peacocks will add a decorative touch to his terrace. Sounds nice. Now, what did you want to see me about? Sir, I would like to hire you to ensure that this treasure gets safely across the country. Well, why do you need help getting two birds to New York? My dear man, obviously you're not aware of the great value of these particular birds. Now, there are many collectors of the rare, the precious, and the unusual who would be only too glad to intercept them en route. Why, they're worth a king's ransom. Will you accept the job? No. No? No, thank you. I don't want to work for Solomon Fisk Bibber. I assure you it'll be well worth your while. I don't want his money. Well, Mr. Paladin, I'm just a businessman like yourself, although obviously not so fastidious. But this is very important to me. Well, if you won't help me across the country, will you please give me protection when I move the birds from the docks to the train? Uh, for a satisfactory fee, of course. Our waterfront is a bit terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> yes. All right, Mr. Higby, I'll lend a hand to uh, another businessman. But remember... Only from the docks to the train. Meg's Wharf. That's what we want, isn't it? Yes. Good heavens, I've never seen such weather. Broad daylight, you can't see three feet ahead for the fog. Uh, I think this is far enough. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, sounds like they're unloading now. All right. Come on. So walk over where we can watch. Right, you are. You'll recognize your crate, won't you? Oh, by all means. Hey, I do believe that's the cage on the hook now. Hope they handle it carefully. That big thing is a bird cage? Well, they're very large birds, you know. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know much about them. Well, possibly one of the most interesting of the Avis Carinatae. In the ancient Greeks, the peacock was known as Juno's bird. You see, the markings on the train were considered the hundred eyes of the giant Argus, set there by Juno. Uh -huh. Now, this particular strain is held sacred in India. <laughs> it's fascinating, isn't it? Hey, what's that? That's the cry of the Pavo Christatus. You mean tell me just two birds can make all that racket? Oh, yes. Paladin, look at the way that cage is swinging in the air. That's all right. The doc can will study it when it comes down. Bringing it down awfully fast. Yeah, they sure are. The cable must have slipped. It's going to crash. I can't look. Hey. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It's all right, Higby. The fall was just a few feet. They're not hurt. But the cage is broken open. They'll get away. Leave it to the doc can. They'll take care of it. Hey, Higby, that bird is attacking that man. He's vicious. I'm going to have to no, stop him. No, 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 put that gun away. Don't you dare. Higby, let me go. Look at that no, thing he's doing. please, please let me handle him. Now you stay here. Oh, thank heavens they're safe. How fortunate. And he only lost two train feathers. Yeah. But that dock hand nearly lost two eyes. So that's a peacock, huh? Eh? Are they always like that? Mean and loud? It's hard to say. They're very unpredictable. Higby, I've changed my mind. I'm going with you. Fine. I hoped you would. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that Solomon Fisk Bibber gets his Pavo Pistotti. He deserves them. This is certainly an elegant compartment. I must say, when you work for a Solomon Fisk Bibber, you go first class. Oh, yes, nothing but the best. Well, now that I've convinced myself this is a worthy project, I'm glad I came along. Good. I can use some easy money. Ah. Why, we seem to be stopping. I wonder why. We're coming to a town. But I don't believe it's a scheduled stop for this express train. Oh, somebody's at the 
door. Yeah, I'll get it. Yes? You Higby? No, that's Mr. Higby. Conductor, we are wondering why the train's stopping. Because this train don't carry no doctor, that's why. Doctor? Somebody ill? Yeah, one of my freight crew. He come out second best in a set to with one of them misbegotten birds riding up there. This man I paid to feed them? Yeah, they finished their breakfast and they started in on him. Oh, dear. Well, now what arrangements can I make to see that they're cared for? Now, Mr. Higby, if them birds is going to eat, you're going to feed them yourself. There ain't nobody in this whole train will go within breaking distance of the critters. Well, how can I manage that? Well, I guess you'll have to ride the freight car with them. This express ain't making mealtime stops for them fiendish things. You mean we ride in New York in the freight car? Yeah. And another thing, you keep them fool things quiet. Folks in the first two cars set up all last night with loaded rifles, thinking the Comanches were closing in. Now you keep them quiet or off they go. Nothing but the best. Huh. Well, these quarters are a bit cramped, aren't they? Now, I'm not sure just how I'll manage. Manage what? Well, the birds should be exercised. I know. I'll let them out of the cage one at a time so that they can walk around a bit. Yeah, we seem to be slowing down. Probably going to make a stop so the engine can take on water. Yeah, I think I'll climb out of this black hole and get the kinks out of my leg. All right, now, easy, easy, one at a time. All right, Mr. Peafowl, you can be first. No, 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 dip, dip, Mrs., you'll have to wait. Uh, here's where I get some fresh air. Ooh. Ooh, my back. Oh, you want to join me? No, no, thank you. Now, hold on to that bird. I'm going to slide this door open. Well, don't open it too wide. Don't worry. I'll... Hey, it's stuck, I can't. Oh. Hear him! Oh, get him, Hey, you come back. Eyes too fast for me. I couldn't hold him. The noise of the door scared him. Look at him go. Well, we'll, we'll have to go after him. Go after him? You crazy? I'd say it was good riddance. We've got to get that bird. Higby, be reasonable. We're in the middle of the desert. How do you figure we could ever find him? Anyway, you've still got the hand. My agreement with Bevo was for the pair. Payment on delivery. And I intend to get paid. All right, what do you suggest? Well, uh, uh, Get some of the cord off that box in the corner. What for? We're going to make a collar and a leash for the hen and get off the train. A collar and a... Oh, no, you can't be serious. Of course I'm serious. We'll have to hurry. I won't have any part of such nonsense. You accepted the job, Paladin. <sighs> All right. So I did. <laughs> I've done some fool things in my time, but this beats all. Walking through the desert with a peahen on a leash. But the idea is sound, Paladin, really. Oh, is it? Yes. See, actually, we're approaching the mating season of the Pavo Cristatis. Now, at the proper time, the lady will call to the gentleman, and he will answer her call post-haste. I see. In other words, we've only to stay somewhere in the vicinity of Mr. Peafowl... And in due time, he'll come back to us. But this is a big desert, Mr. Higby. You don't know how far he's gone. Yeah, the mating cry of the peahen can be heard for many miles. I can believe that. Well, as near as I can figure, we're about ten miles south of the town of Whitewater. we better head that way and get a wagon. Did I say something about easy money? Oh, shut up. And now, here are Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Bergen, why did you stop the car here? I want to talk to that farmer. Oh, mister. Oh, you call me? Why, it's Mortimer Snurd. Oh, where, where? Oh, that's me. <laughs> are there any General Motors dealers around here? Uh, no, no. No, but we got some Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac dealers, though. And some Chevy and GMC truck dealers, too. <laughs> well, Mortimer, those are all General Motors dealers. Oh, well, what do you want to see them all for? Well, I only want to see one for guardian maintenance. Do they make that car, too? No, <laughs> no that's a service that's available only at General Motors dealers' service departments. Oh, I see. Yes. And right now, they're featuring complete lubrications, quality appearance services, brake adjustments, and front-end inspections. 
It's quality work performed by GM trained servicemen at a fair price. Well, that makes good sense even to me. <laughs> What did you find out? We can get a wagon, all right, but the only way we can travel through that stretch of desert is in a wagon train with a cavalry escort. Well, why is that? Army order. Seems there's been an Indian uprising. Oh. Well, what do we do? Well, they're making up a train now. We can join it, all right, but... I think our best bet is to take that fool peahen and try to make it back the other direction to the nearest railroad station. No, Paladin. No, that peacock's somewhere out on that desert. We've got to find him. Look, Higby, I know more about this than you do. Does the money you might get from Solomon Fisk Bibber mean more to you than your life? It isn't that, Paladin. It's a matter of business ethics with me. I gave my word, and I intend to keep it. Yep. I see what you mean. Well, come on. <coughs> but that thing goes in a crate. Kennedy wants us to stop. Yeah, who? Who knows? Yes, Lieutenant? All wagons into a circle when we reach that grove of cottonwoods ahead. Indians just over the ridge. You expect attack? Well, from our scouts' report, we're greatly outnumbered. But we must be prepared to defend ourselves as best we can if necessary. What's behind this uprising, Lieutenant? Uh, the chief of this particular tribe, Old Many Feathers, was friendly to the whites. He died a short time ago... Some of the young bucks who didn't agree with his policies are trying to take over, stir up a bit of trouble. I see. There's a bare possibility they haven't spotted us, so no fires. And move as silently as possible. Right. Get up. You hear that, Higby? The lieutenant wants silence. Pass the word along to the peahen. All right, Paladin. I'll keep the blanket over the crate. That'll keep her quiet. <laughs> Higby. Paladin, where have you been? I had a talk with the lieutenant. Oh, Paladin. Look, Higby, it's almost dawn. If they're going to attack, it'll be any time now. now that uh, rifle you were issued, you have it handy? Yes. Uh, Paladin. Huh? Uh, look up there on the top of that tallest cottonwood tree. <laughs> oh, no. How'd she get up there? Oh, she flew out of the crate when I opened it to feed her. Oh, Went right for that spot, and she's been roosting there ever since. <laughs> What is that? What's that noise? Uh, it's a bird, Lieutenant. A what? Uh, a bird in the top of that tree. I never heard a bird that sounded like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't suppose the Indians have either, and they'll probably be over to investigate. I guess our party better be alerted for an attack, Lieutenant. No, I'm afraid so. And if they come, don't waste ammunition. Let them get in range before you fire. I'll pass the word along. Right. <laughs> Paladin, listen. Yes, I hear it. No, that... That's the peacock. You mean he's come back? Yes, he's answering the mating call, just as I said he would. That's fine. That's fine. That's all we need. You hear that? Indians? Indians. Oh, no. Paladin, I've been fighting Indians for 15 years, and I've never seen the like. Here they come tearing down that slope. They must have outnumbered us 20 to 1. They get down to that clearing, stop, and without firing a single shot, ride on back up the hill. I tell you, it's got me baffled. Well, it had me baffled too, Lieutenant, but I believe I have it figured. Huh? Yes, it was our advance force that turned them back. A uh, what? The peacock. <laughs> That silly bird who was strutting back and forth down there in the clearing? A pretty spectacular bird, you'll have to admit. Yeah, all those feathers. Uh-huh. Many feathers. The peacock was strutting back and forth down there with an I dare you attitude. <laughs> Actually, he was following his instincts to protect his mate who was up there in the tree, but 
I'm convinced that those superstitious Indians who had never seen a peacock before felt it was the spirit of their old chief, Many Feathers, daring them to fire on his friends, the white men. <laughs> yeah, that guess is as good as the next. Yeah, it'll do until we can think of a better one. Well, Paladin, I have that precious pair secured at last. Then we're ready to go, huh? Well, at least we have them halfway to New York. Well, what are you fellas doing traveling with those fool birds anyway? Oh, picking up a little easy money. Oh, Mr. Paladin, don't you want to go downstairs in lobby to read newspaper? No, Miss Wong, I just want to rest and relax, and I think I stand a better chance up here in my room. Oh. When you finish cleaning and leave, I'm going to lock the door. Hey, boy, tell me you go all the way to New York. Take birds. Pea birds. That's right. You know, Mr. Paladin, in China, was great honor for him for her to give peacock feather. Yes, so I understand. A peacock feather was considered some sort of an award. Yes, sir. Yeah. This was a successful trip, Mr. Paladin? Oh, very. Oh, oh. Of course, by the time we delivered the birds to Mr. Solomon Fisk Bibber, the peacock looked pretty bedraggled, but his disposition was um, worse than ever. Pepsi-Cola refreshes without filling. Why? Because it's truly light. Charlie, you're forgetting something. Wait, Kay, there's more. Yes, ice-cold Pepsi is the delicious refreshment that goes great at a picnic or a party. But, Charlie... And Pepsi goes fast. People like it, so keep plenty handy. There. Oh, you did fine, except for one thing. Well, I mentioned lightness and how Pepsi refreshes and how fast it goes. You left out Pepsi sociability. You know the Be Sociable song. But, Kay, I can't sing. I can. Listen. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and dead and air. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. Well, at least I can say this. Pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Please do. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Bartlett Robinson, Frank Katie, and Joseph Kearns. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs> <laughs>